Hey, it's Joe Glines from Automator, and earlier today, Rizwan asked Isaias for a little bit of help in using the case statement, and the GUI is working. Let me show you the current GUI. Um, I've been using this tool forever, so I can hit a hotkey. It pops open, and I can choose which of these, and if I put in a search term, it will look for that, and it will run it. Let me say, um, menu. Oh, my uh, auto, <laughs> auto assist is running. Anyway, and I can wrap it with double quotes or not, but I'm going to hit search. It's going to open, of course, it opened on my other window, but it will it will search across those sites using Google to search those sites because it's a far better search engine, right? So it's pretty cool. Now, my tool, this tool, which I've been using forever, um, does not remember, like if I select this and uncheck that, it doesn't remember that when I, if I hit search, so that actually didn't search for anything, but if I call it back, it doesn't remember that I had deselected that. And so I asked Rizwan to make it remember these settings and add a couple other cool things like have a dark theme so we can change the text, the background to black and the text to like a white or a yellow or something, right? As well as a couple other things, which you'll notice some of it in the video, but a lot of the video, Isaias was teaching Rizwan how to use a case statement and the benefits and how easy it makes it, right, to show... Um, your logic when you're using a case statement. You can do the same thing with ifs, but it's ifs are a little bit slower, but they're also just not as easy to read, um, nor is a ternary, and ternaries are powerful, but again, it makes it more complex to, and, and deep to look at. So, hope you enjoy the video, like the video if you learned something. We He actually, during the video, I noticed Isaiah was showing a lot of our client code. I'm gonna cut that from the video because we can't be just sharing that code, um, but he showed a very, very complex situation where he's using a case statement with that, um, several hundred lines and different breakouts of groups. But um, like I said, it's uh, that's our client stuff. I don't want to share that. But it doesn't really take away from the video other than showing that you can have things very complicated. So at that part, just remember, imagine something very complicated. All right. Give a thumbs up if you like the video. It really helps us out. Cheers. All right. So let me explain really quickly uh, what this does. So let's say that you have a variable. Um, let's say color. And it could be white, right? Mm. You can have an if statement. If color is red, mm. message box red. Else if color equals blue, message box blue. Else if color equals white, Message box. So this works just fine. I, I think you understand this code, right? So you know what is yeah, going on, yeah, right? I okay, fine. Yeah, I understand. Right. Hmm. So you see that it showed white, right? But right. what the code did is that it went and checked this first. If that hmm. is not true, then check yeah. this. And if that is not true, it de yeah. then check the other one. So it did three different checks, right? So it did one, two, and then it showed up the message. But you can write the same thing with a switch statement. So we can say color, and we're going to create the case. The case of whether is uh, red, the mm -hmm. case of whether is blue, and the case of whether is white. Now, of course, we're going to have a message box on each of them. So it's going to be a message box red, then blue, and then white, right? This is the same. This is the same as the one above, but there's just a little tiny bit of difference. In the if statement, it check for that if it is not true, it checked for the other. If it is not true, then it checked the white. In the switch statement, it doesn't do that. It goes to color and it jumps straight into white. It doesn't check for anything else. Wow. Does that make sense? It doesn't yeah, check for red. It doesn't check for blue. It just jumps directly into white. And that's cool. The other thing is the switch statement is great for making it easy to read. With the else if statement, you have a lot of things going on, and especially when you have a lot of values and so on, 
it gets a little bit confusing. And I can give you a very good example of that. Let me show you. The switch, you can, own, you can use it especially when this variable can have one value out of multiple. Let's say that you have, it can be either white, it could be red, it could be blue, but it could be only one of those things. Does that make sense? If if uh, if cannot match in the uh, any of case. this, yeah. If you cannot match any, then you have what is called a default, and then message box none of the colors. So now, if I make this yellow, I don't have a case for yellow. Then it would say it didn't match any of the colors. So it would say none, right? That's what you can do. Right. If you don't have that, what it's going to do is that it's not going to do anything. So if I if I do this, it's not going to do anything, right? Because I don't have code for it, you see? So yeah. they are the same, but it is only for when a variable can have one of a group of values that you know that you can have. Now, if you have to calculate the value, then I wouldn't use a switch statement. That doesn't work. For example, let's say that you have um, color yellow, and you want to know if color, if in string color, right, uh, message box LL, else if in regex match color right message box so here you see that i'm using functions in here yeah so i'm yeah, I know. calculating something out of the variable in that case, I, I sh you shouldn't use uh, the switch statement. It doesn't make sense to use the switch statement here. In this case, I would use the if else if because we're calling functions that would return a value that we don't know what that value is going to be. All right. So All right. if you're using functions, use if. If it is just you know what the variable can have, then use a case statement. It, that, that's how I do it. I hope that yeah. makes sense to you. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay, cool. So in any case, um, in, in that one that you showed me, um, having a case statement makes sense. So because if you show the code again, can you show the code? Yeah, uh, I now. Right, so here we know that this guy, the last search, can mm -hmm. only have the values one, two, or three. That's the only thing that it can have. It will not have anything else. If you know yeah. what it can have, then yeah, mm -hmm. using a switch case statement, is it makes sense. If you don't know, then use an if statement then. OK. Uh, if, uh, uh, if, in this case, uh, if I don't uh, have uh, any value from here, uh, may maybe it's not show in my GUI. So that's why I should to use default. Right. So because, if it is not, yeah, because, if it is not one of those, then you need a default value, right? Because because it's coming from the any file. Right. If you. Or if any file was uh, deleted from the my uh, my directory, right. so maybe maybe my my uh, right oh, yes my yes that is right. So let me request control there. Let me tell you what I would do there. I would say the default case. So I would say default is uh, first one. First now one I would say uh, mm, okay. It's always the, the the first one. Well, I would say message box. The the, the I would say the last search value. Hold on, I think I got outside of this.
the option is 16 16 uh, yes 16 Sorry. and icon access also same yeah. yeah you can stop the script right there and say hey there is an error or i could restart the computer restart the 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 script right so i can reload the script if i wanted to because i think you create the ini file, right? So if the ini, what if the ini file no. is not there? No, no, no. It's it's creating from here. Uh, this function, uh, from this function, yeah, uh, here. Right, but what if the ini file doesn't exist? Go on, the script. Go to the top. So here. You're reading from the ini file, right? But right? What if that file doesn't exist? What you should do is say, hey, if, if not file exist ini, right? So if that file doesn't exist, you have to recreate it. You have to create a default value. So it would say ini write, right? We're gonna any write and we'll say one, two, um, two, uh, any here, and then we're gonna write um, last last search search, and then in the end we're gonna have auto hotkey, right? Mm. So at least create. The any file. What? This is the default. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This. No, is the, the default, default is not the whole thing. The default is just the number one. So this part right here is the key. Okay. Okay. So what you're reading is the key. The key is autohotkey.com. The value is one. If there is no value, so that's what but, it's supposed to be here. But line. But line number twenty five, it's not working. If I can, if change the oh, yeah, that, that's the problem. So right now, let me let me mm -hmm. just give you. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. What, hold on, give me just a second. <laughs> you you don't need to do none of that. So so you don't need to do that. No, okay. because you're reading from autohotkey.com. You're mm -hmm. reading the value that is there, and it will be a one or a zero. Right, and right. if there is no value, like for example, it failed, it will give you a one anyways. That's it. But you don't have to do none of that. This is what but, the any read is doing for you. But as I has, I have lots of working from the the, the code last search. Yeah, and you will uh, have to. Yeah, you will have to <laughs> fix all that. That you don't need to do all that. So now here. What are you okay. doing here? You, what you're doing is the site equals. Um, so why are you doing all that? Like I'm not sure what what are you doing here. Because 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 I am. Uh, if if you can see the GUI. Uh -huh. uh, uh, all, you're you're all... checking the ones that are okay. Yeah, I understand what you're doing now. Right. So what you would do is. Well. Oh, I see what you're doing. Sorry. So I think one, I, I understand what you're doing now. So basically here, hold on, let me go back. So here you're getting the whole section. You're not just getting one value. Is that right? You're right. Okay. So sorry. Yeah. I, I understand now what you're doing. Why is that not? Last search autohotkey.com, right? Right. So yeah, keep it as it is. What you're doing is actually reading the whole section and checking the ones that you want. I understand, but in that case, you're making yourself, you're, 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 instead of looping like this, you could have had a list of the sites. Where do you have a list of all the sites that you have? Right, with the checkboxes, I, I guess. So let me see the checkboxes. Where are the checkboxes? Checkboxes. Uh... Where do you create the checkboxes? I think. Oh, this is this is your list of websites. Yeah. It's. What? Yeah, it doesn't uh... have the same. What is this? Oh, okay. Hold on. 
All right, I see it. Okay, whatever. So from here, I could do that. You could do, check this out. I could say, hey, um, instead of that, I'm going to comment it out. Don't remove it. But I would say, but it's K in this case. Why are you doing that? Okay. Yeah, no, that, okay. that, that you don't need that either. That is the index. That is index. You can have the index here. Then you don't need K, okay? Okay. If you, if you just put site, it's just giving you site. But if you put the other variable like K in here, it's gonna give you the index and you don't have to count that. You don't have to put that, you don't have to do this either. So you don't have to do none but, of that. Right? But, but hmm. yeah. Uh, but I I will uh, I I'm using the two four key two four loops in this. Uh, uh, right. In this yeah, case. I understand. So that's why. So that's why I need. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah, I, will, I will show you what you're gonna do. So we're gonna go just for the site, okay? So that's the first one. That's the site, and for each of them, I'm gonna get the is checked. Is the any read any read um, the any file the last search right and the value that I want to capture right here is the site. Let me see the line. And the default value is false. Right? Uh, and I have that. And now I just have to do this. Check this out. Hmm. I don't need to do this here. I just read the value. And right here. Oh, Check the spell of last search in any file. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So I don't need to loop or do anything like a secondary loop. Okay. Because okay. Hmm. I go to the any file. Hmm. I look for that one side and it tells me what is in there. If it doesn't okay. find it, it will say false. Right. All right. Now, whenever I add them to the list view, I check and put whether it's true or false right next to the check. Does that make sense? So, and let me double check something with this one here. So, when you do when do do to the list view add, here, you see the options. Yeah, you use the word check for the options. So then our code right now, it should work. Let's go ahead and test it. Let's see what happens. Um, there was an error. Let me see, hold on. What was the error? Returns to run. Oh, okay. So that is because we are not inside a, um, a function. The return is only it should only return something if you're in a function. But if you're not in a function, it shouldn't return anything. So let's go back. So right. So now let's take a look at this guy, right? Now our any file does it have the one in here? Yeah, it doesn't have anything. Yeah, I I remember I was deleted. Uh, the search box. How do you save that? When, whenever you yeah. click on them, do you save that? Uh, reload it. And I click both of the front and search. Mm -hmm. It's it's work. Right, okay. And, now uh, now let's reload the script. Did it save the uh, file? What? It, it's too, yeah. So now it has it. Yeah. Now let's reload the script. Reload the script now. Hmm. Yeah. You see working. that it's working? 
So, so yeah. as you can see, in my case, you don't have to loop over the things, right? Okay, so you don't have to loop here mm. because you are doing what any read is doing for you. That's the problem. So you, you're duplicating the thing. If you are going to loop over the things, then you don't need any read because you you are doing it. But if you have any read, then you can let go of all of this code and just... That's it. You see? that That's so simple, right? Yeah. Because you already have all the names in there. And I just go to the ini file and look for that name and see what the value is. And if the value is zero or, or the value cannot be found, I'm going to make it zero. So it's going to be unchecked by default, right? right? Right. Right. I understand. Right. So in this case, um, just modify the code and do this instead. You don't have to have those loops. Um, it doesn't really matter what you had works, right? But the point is, what if I have 10,000 websites? Then you're going to be looping a lot. With the any read, you don't have to do that. The any read is just going to give you the value for that one site. Uh, you mean to say that uh, 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 ten thousand websites are uh, it's not uh, reliable to any the any file? It is better to use the any file instead of looping because looping. Okay. because the loop the loop is going to be slower. Yeah. So, but at this point, look at this. If I delete the ini file, right? Right. If I delete it. You, you, yeah, delete. Right. Um, right. This part of the script right here hmm. is going to go ahead and say, hey, is the file exist? No. Hmm. Then it will write the any file for you. And when you go back here, you should find the any file with the last search made one. See that? Yeah. And yeah. Now, our script, when it starts, it will start with auto hotkey checked. See that? Yeah. Right. That's what you do. With, whenever you're doing any files, make sure first if the file exists or not. And if it doesn't exist, create it. Because if not, you're going to have problems down the line. But that's it. So I hope that that was um, a good explanation and that you could, yeah. you know, yeah, you, you yeah, can understand yeah. from there. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. You, you, are a, you are a great, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So we're going to be talking later then. Uh, are you going to continue working on this one? Just go ahead and make sure. I, I don't think you need to change the code right now. Just show that to Joe and see if that is good enough. And um, if he needs us to update the other loops, then we do it. But if not, it's okay. It's working, right? Okay. All right. It's working. Hmm. Cool.